forgive me for uh, staying on aliens for a bit longer. Do you think they're more likely to be friendly to befriend us or to destroy us? Well, I think for the most part, uh, they'll pretty much ignore us. <laughs> if you were a deer in the forest, who do you fear the most? Do you fear the hunter with his gigantic uh, 16-gauge shotgun? Or do you fear the guy with a briefcase and glasses? Well, the guy with the briefcase could be a developer about to basically flatten the entire forest, destroying your livelihood. Yeah. So instinctively, you may be afraid of the hunter. But actually, the problem with deers in the forest is that they should fear developers because developers look at deer as simply getting in the way. I mean, in War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, the aliens did not hate us. If you read the book, the aliens did not have evil intentions toward hum homo sapiens. No, we were in the way. Man. So I think we have to realize that alien civilizations may view us quite differently than in science fiction novels. Yeah. However, I personally believe, and I cannot prove any of this, I personally believe that they're probably going to be peaceful because there's nothing that they want from our world. I mean, what are they going to take us? What are they going to take us for? Gold? No, gold is a useless metal for the most part. It's silver, I mean, it's gold, golden colored, but that only affects Homo sapiens. Squirrels don't care about gold. And so gold is a rather useless element. Rare earths, maybe. Platinum-based elements, rare earths for their electronics. Yeah, maybe. But other than that, we have nothing to offer them. I mean, think about it for a moment. People love Shakespeare, and they love the arts and poetry. But outside of the earth, they mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, when I write down an equation in string theory, I would hope that on the other side of the galaxy, there's an alien writing down that very same equation in different notation, but that alien on the other side of the galaxy, Shakespeare, poetry, Hemingway, it would mean nothing to him <laughs> or her or it. When you think about entities that's out there, extraterrestrial, do you think they would naturally look something that even is recognizable to us as, an, as life? Or can, would they be radically different? Well, how did we become intelligent? Basically, three things made us intelligent. One is our eyesight, stereo eyesight. We have the eyes of a hunter, stereo vision, so we lock in on targets. And, and uh, who is smarter, predator or prey? Predators are smarter than prey. They have their eyes to the front of their face, like lions, tigers, while rabbits have eyes to the side of their face. Why is that? Hunters have to zero in on the target. They have to know how to ambush. They have to know how to hide, camouflage, sneak up, stealth, deceit. That takes a lot of intelligence. Rabbits, all they have to do is run. So that's the first criterion, stereo eyesight of some sort. Second is the thumb. The opposable thumb of some sort could be a claw or a tentacle. So hand-eye coordination. Hand-eye coordination is the way we manipulate the environment. And then three, language. Because, you know, mama bear never tells baby bear to avoid the human hunter. Bears just learn by themselves. They never hand out information from one generation to the next. So these are the three basic ingredients of intelligence. Eyesight of some sort, an opposable thumb or tentacle or claw of some sort, and language. Now ask yourself a simple question. How many animals have all three? Just us. It's just us. I mean, the primates, they have a language. Yeah, they may get up to maybe 20 words, but a baby learns a word a day, several words a day a baby learns, and a typical adult knows about uh, almost 5,000 words, while the maximum number of words that you can teach a gorilla in any language, including their own language, is about 20 or so. And so we see the difference in intelligence. So when we meet aliens from outer space, chances are they will have been descended from predators of some sort. They'll have some way to manipulate the environment and communicate their knowledge to the next generation.
That's it, folks. So functionally, that would have that would be similar. That would we would be able to recognize them. Well, not necessarily, because I think even with Homo sapiens, we are eventually going to perhaps uh, become part cybernetic and mm -hmm. genetically enhanced. Already, uh, robots are getting smarter and smarter. Uh, right now, robots have the intelligence of a cockroach. But in the coming years, our robots will be as smart as a mouse, then maybe as smart as a rabbit. If we're lucky, maybe as smart as a cat or a dog. And by the end of the century, who knows for sure, our robots will be probably as smart as a monkey. Now, at that point, of course, they could be dangerous. You see, monkeys are self-aware. They know they are monkeys. They may have a different agenda than us. While dogs, dogs are confused. You see, dogs think that we are a dog, that we're the top dog. They're the underdog. That's why they whimper and follow us and lick us all the time. We're the top dog. Monkeys have no illusion at all. They know we are not monkeys. And so I think that in the future, we'll have to put a chip in their brain to shut them off once our robots have murderous thoughts. But that's in 100 years. In 200 years, the robots will be smart enough to remove that fail-safe chip in their brain and then watch out. At that point, I think rather than compete with our robots, we should merge with them. We should become part cybernetic. So I think when we meet alien life from outer space, they may be genetically and, and uh, cybernetically enhanced. Mm -hmm.